We will call the uh, November 29, 2017 Longview MPO board meeting to order. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody. Karen, would you like to make an introduction for us, please? Yes, good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you to our meeting today. I'd like to introduce a new staff member for the Longview Metropolitan Planning Organization. This is Macy Wires, and she is our transportation planner. She started in August, and I want to extend a warm welcome to her with the city of Longview. Welcome, Macy. Thank you. We are now to approval of minutes of the July 26, 2017 meeting. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Make a motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Now review the revision 2017 to 2020 transportation improvement program. Karen Owens. Thank you, Mayor. We have two projects. Uh, this, this board has seen these projects before because back uh, earlier this year, um, reviewed these projects as they were being applied for by each of the cities. We have two additions. They are two bicycle and pedestrian projects for FY18 to be adopted into the four-year transportation plan. They are the FM 3272 White Oak Road sidewalks and the Guthrie Creek shared use paths. The city of White Oak applied and received an award of about $712,540 to construct sidewalks on the east side of FM 3272 for about one mile long between Bermuda Drive and Center Street. The local contribution by the city of White Oak is about $163,800. The project will be funded through TxDOT's curb, ramp, and pedestrian improvement program in the year of 2018. This is an important project because it provides a bicycle pedestrian link between the neighborhoods and the schools while encouraging walking and bicycling in their community. So we want to say congratulations to the city of White Oak for their award. The city of Longview applied for and received an award of $3.028 million for two shared use paths. There's a picture on this slide that, to give you an indication of what, what that path looks like. It's an off-road type of trail. And uh, for this particular project, the local contribution is $4.678 million. This specific project will complete two gap sections in the Guthrie Creek Trail System. The paths will be about 12 feet wide and will include five pedestrian bridges over creeks, crosswalks, warning signals at surface roadway crossings, as well as pedestrian underpasses at Judson and McCann Roads. Currently, there are four paved trails used by walkers, runners, and bicyclists, as shown on the map in the black line. The dash line is the trail section that began construction this week. The two blue trail segments will fill in the two gaps, will fill, will fill in the gaps and provide about 10 miles of continuous shared use paths. So we wanted to say congratu congratulations to the city of Longview for that award. This is the first of two public meetings to present these projects. A public comment period is being held from November 28th to December 15th. No action is required by the board today and that concludes my comments on these projects. Are there any questions or comments from the public or from the board? Thank you, Karen. We'll now approve the fiscal year 17 annual listing of projects. Ms. Owen. Thank you. Annually, the MPO is required to publish and make available a list of projects for which federally funds have been obligated. This obligation happens at the time when the project is executed and the state or the grantee requests the federal funds. Federally funded obligated projects during the previous year included highways, bridges, pavement, safety projects, as well as public transportation. And while you've got the handouts of the document with you, I'm gonna go ahead and refer to the maps and go through these projects individually so you can get a reference point as to where these projects are located. We have a project on Loop 281 uh, that many of you are familiar with between Shofter and US 80 that's under construction, and that's to widen that roadway to six lanes. It's about 4.5 million, and the estimated completion date is June of this next year. US 80 in Gladewater, there's a reconstruction project that's occurring there to add a center turn lane at a cost of about 3.5 million, and the estimated completion date is May of 2018. I know the, the residents of Gladeor will be glad when that project is over and their construction is done. US 80, we have a new traffic signal 
uh, that will be going in there at East Lansing Road at about 441,000. It's estimated to be completed in February. As well as on FM 968, there's some texturizing of the shoulders and the center line. It's a safety project between the Harrison Gregg County line to US 80 over in Marshall. That's about 1.3 million and that's estimated to be finished in April of 2018. US 259 at Hawkins Parkway. This was a somewhat high profile project. That project is nearly completed. It's to construct a northbound right turn lane on US 259, as well as remove the dip on Hawkins Parkway. The estimated completion date is, is, is next month, which of course is December 2017. This is a great project because I think it highlights a list of the funding by each of the federal, state, the net RMA, as well as the city of Longview. And it highlights the, the fact that this was a true partnership to, uh, to improve this intersection. We have a bridge project at State Highway 149 at the Sabine River, and that was basically to replace concrete bridge rail, metal beam guard, and the concrete uh, structure repair. 2.9 million, that's estimated to be finished in July. Loop 281 uh, on the east side of, of our area is to construct an eastbound and westbound left turn lane on the loop at the intersection of Hollybrook. That's 2.293,000 roughly, and that's estimated to be finished in December. Another project that has been federally obligated, has, which has not been actually installed yet, are installing flashing yellow left turn arrows on our existing traffic signals throughout our city. There's 32 intersections along state highways, and that project cost is about <coughs> 1.27 million, and that's estimated to be completed in May. All right, public transit is a component of this report as well. And you can see the breakout of the different types of operating expenses, capital, planning, and so forth. From a federal standpoint, there was 1.5 million federally obligated funds, state matched with about 460,000, local funds about 300,000 for a total of 2.28 million. So that concludes my remarks on this item. Are there any questions or comments from the public or the board on the annual project listing? Thank you, Ms. Helms. This does require approval. So is there a motion? Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries, thank you. Now to project updates. Yes, I have a few of those, Mayor and the board. Just wanted to celebrate the moment and uh, remind everyone and just show you a few pictures of our George Ritchie extension, which was open to traffic in November uh, on the 17th. Uh, this is a picture of um, looking eastbound right in front of the, the Spring Hill schools. You can see the school zone uh, mast arm sign in the distance and a bridge. Also the bridge itself. We've got the, um, the bicycle lanes on either side of the roadway, a center turn lane, as well as sidewalks on the south side of the roadway. another look of it and then we've we've noticed we've got quite a few um, bicyclists that have been using it as well I just wanted to say a big thank you to TxDOT uh, Stacy Wiley is with us today from tech from the TxDOT Longview area office Stacy I'm sure this was a, a very um, extensive project and I know your office oversaw much of this work and I just want you to know that we really appreciate all the work to get this open all the way from 259 to State Highway 300 so thank you for that Right, I want to give a quick update mm -hmm. on the bicycle pedestrian plan that the Longview MPO is, is undertaking. This project is currently uh, wrapping up the public involvement stage. We've got our survey and online website that will be, the survey will close this week on Friday. To date, we've received 1,282 surveys, which is, which is pretty, uh, it's a pretty high number for us and we've been really very pleased with the turnout of, of folks that are actually responding to it. As far as the interactive website, we've had about 40 people make roughly 168 comments on the website by either marking barriers, drawing lines, where they'd like to ride, where they'd like to walk, um, any of those types of comments. So we'll be taking that information. I've got our website listed. If there's anyone that hasn't filled out the survey up to this point, to please, please do so. And we ask all of our citizens to fill that out in the entire Longview, White Oak, and Gladewater area so we can get your comments on this plan. Where we go from here, our consultant is formulating some recommendations and uh, currently, and we'll have a draft list of projects and bicycle pedestrian policies 
early in 2018. We also anticipate a public meeting in early in 2018 to present a draft plan. So we're in the, in the formulation uh, stages at this point, and the consultant is going to take those surveys res responses, all the data they've gathered to this point, so we can adopt a plan by May of 2018. And that concludes my comments on project updates. Thank you, Karen. For the citizens of comment, I have no speaker card. Would anyone like to speak from the audience? At this point, we're going to recognize our Long Beach City Manager, David Willard, for his 10 years of service to the MPO board. Mr. Willard, Ms. Owens, would you please? Uh, I have, yeah, I have a few comments, <coughs> Mayor. I just wanted to mention uh -oh. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mr. Willard has been with our, our city for, for many, many years, and um, he's been on, on our board since 2010. If you kind of go back in time at, at 2010, that's when TechStop was just embarking on a st safety study on 149, which we know now where the new Walmart is and all of Cisco and such is, has produced uh, some really great economic uh, benefits there. Also, the George Ritchie extension, the pictures I showed you, we were at the very beginning of the environmental study on that project. Also back in 2010 is the year that we saw the orange cones and the orange barriers all along Loop 281. I think we had enough of those for the construction, but we did we did manage through that, and as a, and as a result, we've got a great six-lane facility that, that serves our city very, very well. So just kind of looking back in time, there have been a lot of changes as far as our roadways, and in those 10 years, I think, David, you've seen quite a bit. Just want to personally thank you for your leadership, your positivity. We've come across some challenges in funding some of these projects with Textile. We've had conversations and meetings where we weren't sure how these projects were going to, going to happen, but through your leadership and your can-do attitude, many of those projects were able to, to be realized much sooner than, than, uh, than otherwise. So I just wanted to say thank you for your service to this board. Thank and we you, appreciate all, the, all that you've done for us. Thank you, I appreciate it very much. It's been an honor. So. David, would you like to come forward? Don't be afraid, David. <laughs> <laughs> we're not gonna roast you. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you are. <laughs> Charlie might tell some stories on it. I'm still being a integral part of this board of Longview for the past 10 years, and you, your leadership and your guidance has taken our city to a level we wouldn't be without you, David. There's no way to there's no way to say thank you for all that you've done. There's no way to give you the accolades that you deserve, but I can just tell you this. Without the direction and the guidance that you've given us, um, Longview would not be where we are. And I just really thank you from the bottom of my heart for that three years working for you has been a pleasure, it's been a privilege, and I'm sad to see you go, and um, got your number on speed down, so. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we wish you the best, and I thank you for your service. Thank You've you been a real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> and as Karen said, David has been very instrumental in helping us with funding uh, on various projects, especially with our trail project. But uh, he, he made a trip to Austin and spoke with the governor about this personally. And these are these are things that you know help us in ways that um, our city can never just say thank you. And I thank you so much, sir. Staff comments. I have no comment. Then we are adjourned. Thank you all thank for coming. You. It's been a great day. Thank you. And by the way, Stacy, nice to have you here. Thank you. Stacy's dad was my physics teacher in high school. <laughs> so if you think he's not smart, you're wrong, because his dad was brilliant. So <laughs> nice to have you, Stacy. Thank you. Thank you.